Hi everybody and welcome to CAM Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each day a different staff member or volunteer will share work from our permanent collection. Join us every day at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new work and a new chat. My name's Emily and I have the pleasure of being the Director of Learning and Interpretation at the museum. And the work I chose today is one that has always caught me when I've walked through the gallery and it's of poet Rabindranath Tagore. Tagore was primarily a poet, but he also made notable contributions to literature as a dramatist, novelist, short story writer, and writer of non-fictional prose, especially essays, criticisms, philosophical treatises, journals, memoirs, and letters. In addition, he expressed himself as a musician, painter, actor, producer, director, educator, patriot, and social reformer. So he was pretty much a Renaissance man. Through his work, Tagore introduced new forms of prose and verse and the use of everyday language into Bengali literature, thereby freeing it from traditional models based on classical Sanskrit. He was highly influential in introducing Indian culture to the West and vice versa, and he is generally regarded as the outstanding creative artist of the early 20th century India. His much acclaimed work, Jitanjali, I hope I pronounced that right, which was first produced in 1910 and later translated and published in English in 1912, won him the prestigious Nobel Prize in Literature in 1913 for, quote, his profoundly sensitive, fresh, and beautiful verse by which, with consummate skill, he has made his poetic thought expressed in his own English words, a part of the literature of the West. From time to time, Tagore also participated in the Indian nationalist movement, though in his own non-sentimental and visionary way. Gandhi, the political father of modern India, was his devoted friend. He was knighted by the ruling British government in 1915, but within a few years had resigned the honor as a protest against British policies in India. I chose this sculpture of Tagore because I love his expressive face. Those eyes, that beard, he draws you in, you want to listen to what he has to say. When this was on view in the European galleries, I would pass it regularly and tell myself, I need to learn more about the interesting man behind that amazing face. The creation of this video has allowed me to satisfy that curiosity. This portrait was created by Sir Jacob Epstein, an American expat who lived and worked in London. Epstein was well regarded for his portraiture and the ability to capture in his sculptures the nuances of his sitters. He was a founding member of the London Group, an association of writers and artists promoting modern art in England. During this period, Epstein came into contact with leading contemporary artists, including Picasso, Brancusi, and Modigliani, and met leading figures from around the world. As a result, he received many commissions, which included famous personalities, such as Rabindranath Tagore. The museum's sculpture is a cast of Tagore from an edition of 16 thought to have been originally conceived in 1926. I found this print of Tagore when searching for an image of the Epstein sculpture. I include it here as another representation of the poet by a Western artist still the same gentle wise face. It was created by Sir Muirhead Bone, a Scottish printmaker and watercolor artist noted for his depictions of architectural subjects, city views, landscapes, and his work as a war artist in both the First and Second World Wars. He also made several portraits, including this one of Tagore. Bone did the portrait from life while the poet was visiting his home, Byways, in Steep, Petersville, located in Hampshire in Southern England. To finish this cam look, I wanted to share one of Tagore's poems, which I felt was rather timely. In the comments below, please share a poem or quote that speaks to you at this time. The poem is called Freedom. Freedom from fear is the freedom I claim for you, my motherland. Freedom from the burden of the ages, bending your head, breaking your back, blinding your eyes to the beckoning call of the future. Freedom from the shackles of slumber wherewith you fasten yourself in night stillness mistrusting the star that speaks of truth's adventurous paths. Freedom from the anarchy of destiny, whole sails are weakly yielded to the blind uncertain winds and the helm to a hand ever rigid and cold as death. Freedom from the insult of dwelling in a puppet's world where movements are started through brainless wires, repeated through mindless habits, where figures wait with patience and obedience for the master of show to be stirred into the mimicry of life.